So one of the main requests I get in a coaching session is how to hit the ball further, which is quite a reasonable request and quite achievable. But you need to know which area to attack to get that distance, that power in the most efficient way possible. So today we are going through how to achieve that. So before we can get stuck in, Welcome to Mark Amy Golf. Please subscribe if you haven't already, ring the bell, give us a good thumbs up, and any questions or comments, please put below. Right, let's get stuck in and go through the different stages and where to attack and what could be the link, weakest link in producing some extra distance in your golf shot. So you have four main power sources in the golf swing. Number one, your vertical jump power. Number two, your rotational power, rotating, getting the right sequence through the shot. Your chop power and your wrist release power. So there are your four main power sources in your golf swing to get you, to enable you to hit that ball further. Now, before we dive too deep into this, first of all, you would need a TPI screen to see if you have any restrictions or too much restrictions on mobility and saveability and, and double checking that there are no injuries. But for this particular video, we are gonna say we are all injury free and good to go so we've got no excuses and no restrictions on that front. If you haven't done a TPI screen before please click the link below and check that out. So our next point is there any obvious points in the swing which we could then tweak slightly to give us more distance and make sure that the four power sources that we mentioned earlier in the swing are being used. So I would say pretty much for everyone below that elite level, including the elite level, we're always trying to improve those four main power sources. But with our below that elite level, there's quite a few occasions when we're not actually using the power source, even trying to we're not even implementing it in the golf swing so that would give us quite a bit of scope so you're talking about potentially that the lower half isn't rotating through the shot we could get a more efficient separation from the top half to the bottom half our club face we're opening our club face on the way back which is then adding loft to the shot putting more backspin on it so we're getting that high rise shot to the right which then could cause a big loss of distance so with regards to that, you would obviously do your coaching sessions and gradually tweak that as you go through as you normally would, which would gradually increase more distance and increase more consistency. So you would be working on that in the background. So the next stage is our power test. So that's the bit that is the question we need answered is when someone asks for more distance, they want to hit it, further, which is, like I said at the beginning, a fair enough request, but we need to know if what engine is underneath the hood. So if you're in a Formula One race, have you got a Formula One car? You could, you have the possibilities to win that race, but if you haven't got the Formula One car, you are not in the race. So we need to go through those power tests to see what engine you've got and what power you can produce. So power is a combination of strength and speed. So then we can work out what is your strongest and what is your weakest part of your body, which you can then develop. So then you put everything together, which will then give you that extra distance. So right, let's go through those power tests. So our four power tests. So you need a four kilogram medicine ball for a gent, two kilogram ball for a lady or a junior. I've got a chair for the seated chest pass 
and something to measure the crazy distances. So I'm going to chuck this medicine ball. Right, so the first one is a seated chest pass. So as you can see in the screen, that is attacking our upper body strength. Next one is the sit and throw, which is testing your core and your lats. The next one is our vertical jump, so that is testing our lower body, the leg strength and the leg thrust capabilities. And then our baseline toss, which is testing our efficiency, so basically the whole body of that force into the ground and getting that force up through the body into the arm to then propel that medicine ball down there. Right then, now you've heard it, let me show you the test in action. Right, so here's the results. So I need to work on everything, basically, unfortunately, but I was aware of that, so that's cool. So the weakest department I've got is the sit and throw, so that means I need to strengthen the core and build up the lat strength to help increase that particular department. And then I've just got to gradually raise the bar on everything, basically. So if you can see those numbers compared to the results from the testing at TPI, so they're recommending that you've got to try and get past that 15 into the bracket between 15 and 18 and then develop it from there. So this is a pretty cool chart that you can see in the screen now. So this will give you your numbers with potential to how much ball speed that you can reduce. So mine is just bang on. So I hover around 15 with those results that I've just showed you and my ball speed can get up to 140 to 145, depending on how efficient my swing is. So for me to say get to get to 150, I can improve with efficiency of my swing, but also I can do with reducing more power. So power is a combination of strength and speed, as I said, but also it's a combination of mobility, stability, efficiency in the swing, strength, and power, sorry, strength and speed, which then gives you that power. So you're trying to work on each little department. I know it's difficult, but if you can just gain in each little department and you know where you're trying to gain, then you will make that progress. You will move forward. You will get more distance. You will get more power. You will get more consistency. So all the people I recommend to help you with that, so your physios and your personal trainers, and obviously then your golf coaches who you would speak to to then help improve the technique and advise you on which route to take to get the quickest and most efficient results. So I hope all that makes sense. Any questions or comments please send them through. Give us a good thumbs up and I'll see you soon.